So let's go over to the master section for a minute and see what's here. If we look up, we will see this particular section right at the top is called the fat channel. This is where the real action takes place when we're listening back uh, and making adjustments to things. Uh, sorry about the lighting. All right, there are switches for an on and off for an EQ, the noise gate, and the compressor. When you hit EQ, you'll notice EQ parameters show up in the window. And these are your boosts and cuts for your four bands. If you tap the select switch, it changes to frequency. If you tap it again, it changes to the Q or bandwidth control, which goes all the way down to a twelfth of an octave, which means you can get in as fine as a single note, single musical note on an instrument if you want to. If you would like to see one band at a time, which is the usual way that I work, you'll see this next switch, which means there's more parameters or more options. If we hit that, you'll notice it goes off. Now it says low band, and we have a separate gain, frequency, and Q, all for that one band. So now you can make adjustments to everything you want as you go. And when you tap this, it brings up the low mid, the high mid, and the high band. And that way, uh, when you're setting your EQs initially, you can use that. If you hit the backward switch, once again, um, we come back to the main page, uh, which you can left, leave set to anything you want, but primarily, if you leave them as gains, it makes a quick way to just make a few adjustments if you want a little more or less of something. Uh, same thing when we move across the noise gate, Threshold, attack, release, and range. The little arrow to the right indicates that if you push this button, there's a few more parameters. In this case, there's also an expander mode, uh, which gives you a ratio, and uh, a MIDI mode, which is accessed. You can see if one of these buttons is lit, it means that the button probably wants to do something. Uh, and you can actually trigger the gate through an external MIDI signal if you want to do some sort of crazy MIDI thing. Uh, and finally, compression. Threshold, attack, release, and ratio are the main page. You jump one page over, and you also get makeup gain and soft knee on and off. You see the little light is lit. And as you remember from moments ago, because you're paying careful attention and completely sober, you will remember that this means that it does something. Like turn the hard and soft knee on and off. So that's it. You have your EQ, noise gate, and compressor, as well as an on and off, a bypass button for them. And uh, one other interesting thing that I will show you is uh, memory A and memory B. Basically, each of these can have two completely independent settings, which allows you to go to the other one and try out some alternate compression, EQ, etc., without losing your initial settings. It gives you a nice way to uh, go back and forth, or AB, hence the names A and B. See how clever Mackie is? I know you're impressed. All right. Next down on the list, we see the uh, controls for solo and studio. This is basically uh, this one knob again has multiple functions, does whatever is lit up. At the moment it's setting talkback level. It can also set studio level which would be to control who's out in the main recording room. Uh, it can also control, oh I'm sorry this bottom one is talkback level. Yeah my eyes are good. Uh, that's the talkback level. This one the solo level and the top one is clear solo. If you have a whole bunch of things pull it up on the console and they're on different layers, and you can't remember exactly what you soloed, uh, and you see this nifty light blinking, which is called the Rude Solo Light, you can hit Clear Solo, and magically, all the solos at once go away, no matter what layer they're on, whether they're showing or not. Very handy. All right, the next two um, knob sections over here control the sound to the headphones or Q-Mix. Uh, again, most of the time we start off, this button down here says Control Room. Uh, these are identical, by the way. Uh, there's two separate uh, headphone outputs on the back of the Mackie, and you can choose what goes to them. Usually we start with the Control Room mix, which means the musicians are hearing whatever we're hearing. We also have the option of hitting AUX 910 or AUX 11 and 12, which add whatever we send on those AUXs to the Control Room level, for example. If the bass player was hearing uh, our Control Room mix and said, I can't hear me, not that that ever happens when you have a musician, but if it did, you could go over to the bass channel and turn up um, aux 9 and 10 if this button was lit up, and uh, it would send more bass to his headphones. Uh, let's scoot over to the other side here, into the rack. You'll see on the side, this is listed as Q1. That means that Q1, on the two knobs we just saw, feeds this four-channel headphone amp. Um, this first channel of it right here 
goes to the green room, which is the room you first walk into when you enter the studio. We do horns, etc. out there a lot, and each of these channels has a separate uh, left-right balance, output volume, bass and treble knob. Uh, the next one over is uh, set to, oops, this one, sorry, ISO 3. ISO 3 is the control room booth. If you look to the right here, you'll see there's a vocal booth there. And, rump. where is it? There it is. Oh, it was hiding on me. Very clever. Um, this one feeds that booth. So, uh, the other two are empty at the moment, and what that means is that you as the engineer can plug your headphones in if you feel so inclined, and or somebody else in the control room. So you've got two open headphones for the control room, one that feeds the green room or the entry room, and one that feeds ISO 3 booth. God, that makes dizzy, doesn't it? It's great. Um, okay. If you come over to Phones 2, QMix 2, uh, this one actually feeds all of the sends going out to the main studio room, the two booths and the drum kit. So uh, they get a collective signal out there. So again, Phones Q1 goes to that four-channel amp, and the four-channel amp goes to either the control room booth or the green room and has two open channels for right here next to the mixer board. And Headphones or QMix 2 is feeding the headphone sends, all four of them, in the studio simultaneously. So, uh, next on our magical mystery tour of the D8B, we'll come down to the next bit of business over here, which is the uh, control room select switches. This is the important knob right here. It is the speaker control level. We also have uh, the talkback switch right here, which dims the monitors at the same time. There's also a dim switch, which can be used separately. Dim switch, of course, makes you dumber. Ha, <laughs> just kidding. Um, dim switch turns the monitors down when you hit talkback, so that the little microphone, which is up here someplace, there it is. Can you guess what it is? That one right there. Um, that is uh, the microphone, controlled by the talkback button. So uh, above that, we have a mono switch, so that you can check phase and mono compatibility more easily. This is the control room select switch. It chooses what you're listening to. Normally, we have master left-right selected, which is all well and good. Uh, there's two digital inputs, which at the moment are not being used. Uh, we have track A, which is the analog returns from the Macintosh computer. So if you want to hear something playing back from the computer, you hit that and you will hear it simultaneously with the uh, master left-right. So, next to that, we have the assignment switches right here. These are used to decide what channels go where. So normally, you can see where it says left-right is lit up. If you look at the board itself, you'll see all the assignment switches are lit, which means every channel lit up is going to the left-right. Uh, oh, there I am. Uh, we also have sends to the eight buses. The Mac is an eight-bus console, and you could simply, for example, decide that you want to send something to bus 7, and if you push the assignment switch on any given channel, it will magically send that channel to bus 7. See how nice that is? Very, very logical. Uh, route to tape. If we hit that button, basically, this is to route any individual channel to any recorder track. And the way that works is we select the channel that we want, and you can select multiple channels by holding uh, the shift key. I can't do it with one hand. Maybe I can. Hang on. Oh, look at me go. Uh, and then you choose what uh, tape track you want it to go to. So right now, we've chosen these two channels, which are 23 and 24. And if we go up top, if we wanted to send those to track 21, we would just go up here and hit the assign button on track 21. So now we have channels 23 and 24 going to track 21. And that's basically all there is to it. That's how you would route individual um, outputs to uh, tape tracks and also how you would use buses. Uh, next on the hit list, the automation controls. Uh, these we'll get into a little later when we talk about automation, uh, but they basically turn the automation on and off and decide what areas are going to be automated. For example, if you only have pan pushed, only pan will receive automation when you turn it. Uh, the setup controls, uh, this does include a couple, of, uh, a couple of useful ones like save and group or save as, 
But in general, uh, this is much easier from the Mackie's graphic user interface, which we'll look at in just a second. 